Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon. Everyone wake out there. <laughs> um, I am so excited to be here with you all. Thank you so much, Madam President Francis. Thank you, Chair, and to all the deans and faculty, alumni, friends, family. I'm joined here also on stage by our City of Boston Deputy Chief of Economic Opportunity and Inclusion, Midori. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, most of all, to the, this is the first time I get to say this as mayor, to the graduating class of 2022, congratulations. Yay. I've been in this new role for about six months now. I think it'll be six months on Tuesday. And sitting here while Monique was speaking, I'm just blown away what an inspiration each one of you are sitting here today to not only show what is possible with hard work and sacrifice and just sticking to it, but to do so with, in some ways, what feels like the weight of the world on your backs throughout this pandemic, with little ones, with the stress with grief and anxiety and isolation that everyone was facing while you still had to keep focused and keep going, I want to thank you for not only showing what it's like on the other end of that and celebrating with you today, but also standing in how much we feel that as human beings, how much it matters when we do share the struggle that we've been through because we need to be honest and open about that so that everyone coming after us knows it's okay not to be okay sometimes, and knows it's okay that we need to all reach out and take care of each other. So more than anything, I'm grateful to this class for all that you've done, taking care of each other and making sure that this is something that we will carry forward to keep focused and moving forward, but also to reach out and bring along us alongside you. So I know every commencement speaker in the history of commencements, dating back here 114 years and everywhere says, Congratulations to this class. I want to be specific about what I mean when I say that. First and foremost, congratulations on graduating soon. <laughs> First, uh, secondly, congratulations on earning your degree. Today is not a celebration of any gift that you have received or a title that you've been given. Today is what you have earned. The grind of late nights and early mornings all the things that you didn't do because you were doing this thing and doing it so well. Today's about those sacrifices, all those who sacrificed alongside you and with you, friends and family, coworkers and coaches, mentors, professors, the people here and in Belize and all around the city and the world who believed in you, trusted and empowered you to do the work required to get here today. Congratulations also on finding something that you are skilled at and energized by, that you will be giving back to and through to the rest of the world. Congratulations on picking up something, earning it, and being energized enough that you stuck with it through all that we have experienced virtually and in person throughout these last few years. Congratulations on learning a trade and having these skills for the rest of your lives. As someone who studied economics in college, I think a lot about going back. I would tell myself in some ways how useless this degree is. I can't explain or help create a single piece of modern technology. The advanced machinery that makes manufacturing at scale possible, I have no idea how that works. Electrical engineering, electric technology, practical electricity, not a clue. <laughs> Everything that goes into designing, fitting, and dispensing glasses to correct vision. Eh. <laughs> so all of you now possess a practical, specialized set of skills that you will use for the rest of your lives. Skills that will help people, help them build and solve and see. You have an understanding of how the world works, an understanding of what makes you the people we need every single day in our communities to fix what's broken and build on what's working. That is incredible, and it's worth celebrating today and for many days to come. 
but I don't want to just congratulate you on all the remarkable things that you've learned and accomplished. I want to congratulate you also on all that you've been a part of. Just last year, Dr. Francis made history as the first woman president, first woman of color president in the 114 years since this school was founded. If you ask me, 114 years in is a little late, but Dr. Francis, Madam President, has been making up for lost time with her impact and the impact of this institution under her leadership. I think just in the last month, we've been together at multiple announcements and celebrations with the, this institution's connections with all parts of our community and the way that you are reaching back and helping our Boston Public School students and our career pathways grow and strengthen. In fact, this institution was founded on a vision for the future. Ben Franklin, as you heard, our founding father, started this with just a thousand pounds, at that time about $4,400 in 1789, with a 200-year plan on how to put that to good use, helping launch young workers in their early careers, and then making available a sum to be used for generations to come. 200 years later, that money had grown to four and a half million dollars, more than, more than a thousand times its original value. So I, as an economic major, I'm very excited by compound interest. <laughs> but my point is that if putting aside a few thousand dollars to a city can set off the chain of events that led us to being here today, that led us to your leadership forever forward, to all of you learning what you have and being who you are, the 114th class of graduates in this institution's history. Just imagine how these historic events you've witnessed and been a part of, this appointment, this bold and dynamic leadership, the Cummings Foundation's expansion and deepening of that impact, this will continue to shape the course of the future. And the future is a part of you, as you are and always will be a part of the future of our city. This school and its people are so deeply entwined with the city of Boston, founded by those who have loved the city and wanted to give back to it. And this institution is soon to be transformed in moving soon to a new home in the heart of our city, in Nubian Square, near and embedded in this city and the communities who want to give back to it and through it. All who have been affiliated with this incredible place have known the best way to carry forward our vision of the future is to invest in our students, to invest in you. And so my hope is that in return, you will invest in our city too, in our communities that you will help build. Especially right now, it does feel like the weight of the world is still on all of us, and so much still needs to change. Boston is looking to be that city and guiding light of the future, and we are looking depending on you all to be part of ushering that in. It would be a continuation of the legacy here. In 1916, more than 900 people crowded into the auditorium of Franklin Union to hear the first ever national conference call in history. Linked together San Francisco, Chicago, Atlanta, Philadelphia, New York, Boston, and even included the inventor of the telephone, Alexander Graham Bell himself. If you actually go back and look at the transcript, it turns out it's a bunch of people just saying, oh no, you go first, no you, no you. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 11 years later, BFIT was the site of the first public demonstration of electronically transmitting an image in history. And look at all that we've done with that technology since then. This place, this very space, this very institution has a long proud tradition of breaking new ground and moving our city forward. And today, you are stepping into your place in that legacy to build a greener, more affordable, more resilient and equitable city for all of us. Not just through technical solutions and innovations that drive technolo technological progress, but through social and cultural progress and equity as well. The French theologian Hyacinth Loison praised the farmer who planted trees and said, these trees, in fact, are those, quote, under whose shade he shall never sit. What's important is that you all haven't just witnessed the planting of these trees. You have been those trees. You've planted some of your own. Every single one of your professors has been like that farmer, carefully cultivating the soil, tilling the fields, creating the conditions in which you grew 
and empowering you to reach for something higher. Next year and the year after that, they'll do it again. And meanwhile, you'll be out there in the world, hopefully not throwing shade, but making it. <laughs> providing stability, shelter, and support to your communities through the strength and skills you've gained here. And I know that as you embark into the world, put down your roots and help others do so too, we don't always see the fruits of that labor. We aren't always there enough, long enough to see them blossom or break the soil. But know that your impact will be untold and that many, many coming after you will be here because of you. If you look around right now, you can see all the people who love you, admire you, are proud of you, who share your joys and sorrows as their own. These are the trees in full bloom. And outside this place, there are hundreds of people whose lives you touched without even knowing it. That little kid on the bus who watched you cramming for an exam or rushing into class. The young mother at Berkeley Perk or right around the neighborhood who saw you walking through these doors and saw herself and maybe a glimpse of the possibility. Your little cousins and nieces and nephews who never considered they could have a career in health information or software development or construction management until you. So I'd like to say not only congratulations, but on behalf of the city of Boston and all of our communities, your communities, thank you. This is a transition into the real world in some ways but it's a reminder, most of all, of the legacy built here that you are stepping into. I find myself every day surprised to be in the space that I'm in. I grew up in an immigrant family and felt out of place in so many situations. It is through the sense of community and possibility of starting to see the stories of those who, had, who shared glimpses of their story, like mine, all those that you've impacted and will impact, that we are able to open the door and hold it wide open for everyone who will come in after you. At the end of the day, we are here because we are celebrating your contributions to this community that you are part of. And so I just wanna close by saying, this city, our city needs you. I know there are many other cities around the, the area that want you, but we need you here to stay here contribute here and to help us build. We are so excited. You have accomplished something incredible here and we are here to celebrate that, but most of all, we are here to celebrate you. To the class of 2022, congratulations on all you've done, all you've been a part of, all that you will do, on the people you are and the people that you will be. Thank you and congratulations. <laughs>